changing budget. Hello, and on behalf of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, welcome to Mosaic. Now, have you heard of the Order of Preachers? They are also called the Dominican Order, as they were founded by St. Dominic. Their official name in Latin is Ordo Predicatorum, translated as the Order of Preachers. And each member wears the Latin initials O.P. for Ordinis Predicatorum predicatorum after his or her name. Membership in the order includes friars, nuns, active sisters, and affiliated lay Dominicans. Now the order is famed for its intellectual prowess, and its 800 years of existence has produced many leading theologians and philosophers. Current membership worldwide of the order includes about 5,800 Dominican friars, including 4,300 priests. And the Dominican Order has an intimate, enduring relationship with the Archdiocese of San Francisco in service and in leadership. In fact, the Dominicans were here before the Archdiocese was. And our original Archbishop was a Dominican priest whose name today graces Alemany Boulevard. Our guests today are two Dominican priests serving in the Bay Area. We'll learn about that Dominican history here, the mission of the Dominicans in the West, and much, much more. So after this brief break, please rejoin us to meet the Dominicans. Welcome to Mosaic. Our guests today are two Dominican priests. Let me introduce them to you right now. On the far end, the large red-headed man is Father <laughs> Michael Hurley. Father, you're the pastor of St. Dominic's Parish I in am. San Francisco. Good for you. And next to him, Father James Moore. And uh, OP after each name, let's not forget that. And you are called the Vicar for Advancement for the Western Province. Yes, correct. All Vicar right. Provincial for Advancement. Very good. And both uh, local guys uh, from Kolinga. Yes, from a farming family. Out in the San Joaquin Valley. Yes, yep. and from? Pacifica. Pacifica, out on <laughs> yeah. the uh, beautiful western coast. Beautiful Pacific right. Ocean, indeed. So, grown up in the Bay Area, you joined the Dominicans in the western province. So, as I mentioned, the history of the Dominicans is intimately involved with the archdiocese, right? So, d tell me about that. Yeah, so when the Dominicans uh, came to California, uh, they wanted to come where um, kind of the action was. The Pope sent two Dominicans who had known each other from the eastern province, and they were working together, and he sent one uh, who was the bishop, Bishop Alemany, to start the diocese here, right. but also sent uh, Father Villarasa, the first Dominican. And so while he created the, the diocese, the Archdiocese of San Francisco, Alemany, Villarasa said, I want to go to the capital. I want to go where the action is. Uh -huh. And at that time in California, what you had is you had uh, the capital was in a place called Benicia, right. California. Okay. And there right. was the government, so it was the capital of yeah. California. Yeah. It was also the portal to the gold rush. So this is in the 1850s, 1854. 1853, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So lots of golds coming in. And the Carquinez Strait is actually a better natural bay sure. than our own bay here. Okay. And so all the shipping and everything was coming in, so all the gold miners would go in. So they came into Benicia, so you had tons of gold. And then also you had guns because the armory, which exists today, right. most of the munitions that were made for the First World War and others were, were made in, uh, from the West Coast were made there in Benicia. So uh -huh. the Dominicans looked and they said, well, you have the government, you've got gold, you have guns, let's bring God. So it's the original 4G <laughs> network. I, I call it the 4G network where you have, you have that, you've got that sense of bringing God to a place where you had all this interaction of, of, of the That's sorts. Right. And, and then the seat of the, arch, uh, of the archdiocese yes. was San Francisco. That's right. right. It, exactly. mo it moved from Monterey to San Francisco right. in 1853. Right. right. And so right. the original Dominican who became the archbishop, Joseph Alemany, a That's Spanish right. Dominican, who'd That's been right. in the States as a missionary for 10 or 12 years Correct. already. That's right. Correct. Um, so what we're talking about is mission territory. Here we are, and suddenly there's how many hundreds of thousands of new population in the San Francisco Bay Area? Exactly. And so, I mean, you know, the Dominicans were founded 800 years ago, and we were just continuing our mission by coming here. Okay. Uh, and founded as an order of preachers, founded as an order of preachers to uh, combat error, to combat heresy, but also to enliven the faith and to bring the faith to people, especially where the Gospels uh, were either not preached well or weren't preached at all. You know, the, um, it's an interesting name, Order of Preachers, to talk yeah. about that. And, and on the website, which we'll, we'll show later, um, there's a nice big red button that says, Request a Preacher. Yes. So I went yeah, to the website, right. and I almost pushed it, but I didn't want to. <laughs> I wasn't sure, sure exactly what would happen. <laughs> but I, 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 I understand that from my experience with Dominicans, too, that it, they're persuasive 
apologists for the faith, or they're mm -hmm. persuasive um, convincers about the importance of truth and beauty and God's presence. Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, one of the things that St. Dominic did was when he founded the order, he set up uh, that we would have not only that we would be active preachers, but also contemplative. So we would live in small monasteries and we would uh, pray and together and we'd also contemplate beauty, contemplate truth, and to give to others the fruits of our contemplation. So, so desperately needed in these busy and kind of crazy times. So you've been in the Archdiocese for 100 and whatever it is now, uh, 50, 60 years from the beginning. Um, there's one parish of Dominicans in the Archdiocese, St. Saint, Saint Dominic's Church. That's right. um, and what you as vicar for advancement for the Western Province, how big is the Western Province? What does it include? The Western Dominican Province is basically all the west coast of California, So, and then it goes as far east as Utah. It goes as far south as Tucson, and then right across the border in Mexicali in Mexico, and then all as far north as Alaska, where we serve. Uh, we actually have a new house in Alaska in um, in Anchorage, and we serve the Cathedral Parish there in Anchorage, but also go out and act as missionaries throughout the great state of Alaska. Yeah, and by the way, one of the original party with uh, Archbishop Alamany was a Dominican sister, right? They're right, also yeah. here in numbers. Yeah, yeah and so the, the wonderful thing about the Dominican order is it's not just the priest or the friars priest. St. Dominic knew that in order to radically change culture or bring God to culture and enliven it, you needed a strong component of women, contemplative nuns. So even before he right. formally founds the order of preachers, uh, he founds the nuns first. And so in this little place in, in, in this France. This is St. Dominic. Pruis. This is St. Dominic, 800 years ago. Mm. I had the privilege of visiting the little monastery now that's been rebuilt in Pruy, and you have contemplative nuns living there. They're actually from all over the world. And so what was actually for me personally attractive to the order is it wasn't simply a group of guys getting together to preach. It was together we are, if you will, the, the tip of the spear going to preach. But behind us and supporting us is groups of contemplative nuns of active sisters, which come a little bit later, but, yes. but begin to, to teach and very much known in this diocese for education. Definitely, yeah. yeah. That's what they did in the beginning. And the contemplative yeah. nuns offer prayer. That's right. And the active sisters offer education or health care and That's other right. sort of, and mm -hmm. helping families in need. Uh, Correct. There was yeah. a lot of disease, orphans and so on in San Francisco in the rough early days. And Correct. They answered this call. They did, yeah. yeah. And so Mother Mary Gomer, who came along with Archbishop Alamany and Father Villarasa, who are our founders, and she was the foundress of the San Rafael Dominican Sisters, yes. who still exist, and uh, Dominican College right. uh, up in uh, San Rafael is from them. Uh, and uh, there are still uh, contemplative nuns and active Dominican Sisters today. Yes. Monastery of, hmm, I'm not sure what the name of the monastery is. In Menlo, Menlo Park. Park. Menlo okay. Park. Corpus yeah. Christi. Corpus Christi. Right. And yeah. interesting fact about Father Michael, actually. <laughs> so um, he has uh, one of the most unique combinations in the entire Dominican order throughout the world, actually. Okay. Which is? Well, when the master of the order came to, to visit, uh, he noticed, or he mentioned to me when I mentioned my sister is a contemplative Dominican nun in Linden, Virginia, that we were the only brother and sister that were both biologically connected but also connected connected spiritually through the order. So. Very nice to know. Great, yeah. Let's take a brief break. We'll yeah. come back and we'll talk some more about the Dominicans finding out all what their mission and history are. Welcome back to our discussion of the Dominican history, mission and projects in San Francisco. My guess Father James Moore, Vicar for Advancement for the Western Province. Father Michael Hurley, Pastor of St. Dominic's Church. Now, um, I wanted to get to this point, which is um, the, the Dominicans are a, a mission order, preaching, persuading, uh, preaching the gospel. I grew up in the East Bay at the tail end of the missionary era of the Irish priests and nuns who mm. came over and Christianized us, you know. It seems to me, and I'll say this is my opinion, we're living in a post-Christian society now, post-Christian world, secularizing world. Um, are we in a new mission territory? And is this what you're addressing in your work? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you look at our culture, there are um, lots of things that the culture proposes as ways for happiness. We see happiness in, the, in kind of, if you will, possessions, what we can get. Real estate in San Francisco is outrageous, right, for, for that real reason. Well, for so instance, success. families cannot live here. It, Children aren't born here. There's Exactly, yeah. So you have, you've got this good and or, or a sense of a pleasure or a sense of power, Silicon Valley and, and all this kind of technology. And so we're living in times which technologically and perhaps in terms of business and economic is booming, and yet there is this deep spiritual lack or absence. Right. Okay. And the culture doesn't have a real response. The response to how is it that, as St. Augustine says so famously, our hearts are restless, right? Yeah. How, how do we address that restlessness? Well, as preachers preaching the truth, contemplating and giving the fruits of that contemplation, we feel like that we've been given a great gift of the gospel truth, and we want to share it with others to fill God's love, that absence that we're all searching for. Yeah. You know, the, the challenge that um, I think we face, you know, we've been priests, you've been priests 11 and a half, no, almost 12 years now, I'm, me almost 11 years, and uh, 10 years ago, I found the big challenge, especially with the young was, they would say, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Oh, yeah. You know, for this? Sure. Here, 10 years later, we're finding, especially the young, it's the next generation after the millennials, it's often called iGen or Generation Z or something, mm. they're saying more, I'm neither spiritual or religious. Yeah. And there's this great kind of angst, like, mm -hmm. like that there's, that there's nothing there. And so philosophically, there's this huge hole. I mean, they're saying that maybe God exists, but he, he definitely has no relevance on my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And it's a real, real uh, melee and a big problem to have. And so we have to know that this is the territory we're going into. That's exactly, interesting. Yeah. Um, do you think there's ever been an era like this before when God and spiritual things sort of didn't matter to the prevailing culture? Yeah, no, it, it, there's, I think you, look, if you're a student of history, you know that these things kind of happen in cycles, for okay. sure, <laughs> in Correct. terms of losing it. And cultures tend to diminish when they are cut off from their spiritual roots, so to speak. Yeah. So, right. so we, we, in, in every age, so St. Dominic, in fact, I think his age and our age has several parallel a kind of connections in that you have people that would say even that they have spiritual tendencies or at least they want to be good people or can recognize virtue yeah. and yet they would reject the institutional church they would see the church as being somehow thwarting or a barrier to God Absolutely. and as Dominicans we see that God's love and the gospel is always, if you will, incarnational. That God created everything, mm -hmm. creates not just a kind of spiritual relationship, but works through the body. He came, God came as man. And not only did he come as man, he then sets up a church. He sets up disciples, followers. And we see ourselves very much continuing that apostolic yes. command to go and preach the God. The last thing Jesus ever said is, yes. go preach right. and we take that very seriously we say, oh, that's if, that, if that's your kind of last will and testament we take that to heart and we're the only religious group that is named not for who founded us we're not osd order yeah. of saint dominic yeah. the only order that's named for what we do yeah. op we preach order of preachers as you said in your beginning with you, you got you got your latin say that you know, right. yes. well, order order is pretty that <laughs> I, really, I tried to say <laughs> no you didn't <laughs> right but yeah I, it seems to me that the culture we're living today has weak weakened families sure weakened yes community, mm -hmm. uh, the most networked culture, and yet everyone's alone with his own preferences, with his iPad. I'm not d dissing technology. I'm mm -hmm. saying, where do we find community? Where do we find Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't have a real relationship with an Instagram account, right? I they cannot, they know, cannot yeah. love you back. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried? <laughs> I'm not getting into that. Yeah. <laughs> Father Michael and I have been friends for too long. We that, that, that's right. <laughs> no, you can say it's what, but you, you mentioned with young people. Now, yes. you don't run school schools for the most part mm -hmm. you you preachers and brothers but you do um, do college uh, um, chaplaincy and things correct like that? correct okay. so um, a lot of what we do uh, we set up uh, centers next to secular universities yeah so for instance for two years I was the chaplain at the University of Arizona ah. down in Tucson okay. uh, so it's a state school but right. we run the Newman Center and okay. so the chaplaincy and uh, we have a number of these throughout the West Coast we have one at Stanford we have one at uh, UNLV one at University of Utah University of Oregon University of Washington. Okay. So uh, we do a lot of this working, especially with college-age students, and uh, I've been blessed through most of my priesthood to be working with younger people. That's interesting, yeah. Uh, my wife's a college teacher, and it's kept yeah. her very young. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. dealing with 18, 19-year-old minds, you know. Yeah. I have no idea, so she <laughs> regales me with stories, you know, at dinner yeah. time. So, 
How are the kids doing? I mean, yeah, another we at St. Dominic's. One of our wonderful ministries is that we have a young adult, a very strong young adult presence. I've heard this. Yeah, and so it's I mean, our mailing list is is you know uh, hundreds and thousands every week, and we gather once a week. So the consistency of young adults who are Catholic to know that you're not alone. I think right. most most folks who are Catholic in right. the city feel like they're cut off, not just from others, but cut off from others who really believe. And so that ministry is really gathering together and allowing people who are young to say, to give permission to each other, I can live my faith boldly in a, in a time where politically, religiously, so many ways of dividing us to just gather together. They they pray together, yeah. they say the rosary together. They, um, in a sense, uh, gather to have fun together. <laughs> they play together, if you will. Uh, but then also to be formed together. So we have uh, lots of talks. This particular, uh, this uh, past things that they've done is is host uh, this one, this this play that uh, we, we were, we had uh, for for the parish. And so they, they seek to bring the parish together yeah. as well. And so they're, they're just very eager to live their faith, but they almost need permission and kind of solidarity. Yeah. There has that. to be social life. Yeah, social and life. This goes back to what you were just talking about with people feeling disconnected, yeah. right? So, I mean, you can't have a relationship with an Instagram account. So people come, they're lonely, they're, they're new to the city, you know, it's a very transient right. population. Right. They're here in the tech. They might know that they're Catholic. Sometimes they're more robust Catholic, sometimes less. But they know that there's a group of people at St. Dominic's. The word is out. And they show up there. And all of a sudden, like they're formed together, that which is it's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a brief break. We'll come back and talk more with our Dominican fathers. Welcome back. We're talking about the Dominican order and their local activities. I want to run two slides now, if I can, let them linger on the screen for a minute. First, slide number one. Here we go. This is the website of the Western Dominican province, and this is the uh, province for which Father James is the vicar for advancement. Uh, if you take a look at this, you'll see every kind of resource for finding out about the Dominicans, what they do. A little picture here of some gentlemen that look very much like our guests today. Wonderful website, easy to find, opwest.org. And the slide number two, then, is from the church in San Francisco that is the uh, parish of which Father... <laughs> Father Michael is the pastor, and it looks like the guys from Abbey Road are crossing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we there are, are some indeed. Dominicans down there. <laughs> but this is the most beautiful Catholic website you'll ever see. And by the way, it's the most beautiful church in San Francisco, I would say. Amen. So <laughs> take a look at it. Amen. Thanks for the slides. And gentlemen, let's talk about this now because um, I have, and I think any, any Catholic who, who lives around here has a kind of impression, vague or not, that hey, St. Dominic's is doing really well. And then you hear about, you get the newsletter from the Dominicans, oh, we have 20 new vocations this year, thinking the Dominicans seem to be doing something right. So right. tell me what's going on. So first of all, there's the success in our ministry sites. And we're f flourishing in places that conventional wisdom says maybe we shouldn't. You know, I mean, San Francisco is a pretty secular city. We've got this fantastic church. Uh, same thing is in Portland. Same thing is in Seattle. Same thing in Anchorage. Same thing in Los Angeles. And, uh, and then again, at our university centers next to these secular yeah. universities, our ministries are flourishing. And then it's also reflected in the fact that men are showing up. I mean, we're growing. We're growing, which is an incredible. You know, you think of these days, we talk about the priesthood shortage and all the, uh, you know, the, the bad news in the Catholic Church surrounding priesthood, whereas there's a lot of good news here, I mean, yeah. the, the, especially our vocation numbers being up and a lot of young men joining, in fact, doubling and going up and kind of this way. I've had that impression, and uh, but it's a long course of discernment it and is. vocation training it is. to be a... That's right. And, yeah. and they're sticking it out. You're ordaining men. They are. And in fact, uh, our retention rate is much higher than it has been in, uh, I think, since we've joined the order, certainly, and, and even before that, since yeah. like 1989, I think our rates are the highest now than they've been since then. So thanks be to God. I mean, not only are men joining, but, joining, but they're staying. And I have this impression, correct me if I'm wrong, but y part of your charism or your procedure is to live in community. Absolutely. So that it's not a parish priest off on his own somewhere mm -hmm. managing six parishes on his own, but you have a community of men and you have a, I don't know, a support system. I think that's attractive. Right. Both Father Michael and I are from very strong families. And so, I mean, at least for me, one of the big reasons I wanted to join an order that had community was because I wanted a family. Yep. And uh, sure. that certainly has worked well with, with us. Father Michael and I have been, been buddies for a while. So. You're like brothers. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Very much so. Exactly. Very much exactly. So. Yeah. And Father Michael, so <laughs> you're running a, a big city parish. Yeah. 
Um, and it seems to be, it, it, I'm saying, uh, there's no children here, the younger generation yeah. can't learn, afford to live here. Sure. You're saying, hey, we have a thriving youth population and young adults group. We, we do, and, and part of it comes from the very, what we call the pillars of the Dominican order. And there are four pillars yeah. that come, and the first is that we pray together. So there are, right now, can, counting our novices, we have eight novices, there are almost 20 men living together, doing various ministries, but living at the Priory in San Francisco. So we gather okay. to pray. Pe that's open to the public. You can come and pray at the very early in the morning for our morning prayers. Wow. In the evening. So people, when they see this group gathered in prayer, they say, prayer is happening. How do I be part of that? I want to right. join. Something's happening here. I want to connect. Right. We, we study together. And so there's a sense in which there's one person who will preach on a weekend, but all the preachers gather together. Yeah. In fact, and we talk about the gospel. We reflect on the gospel. We do this very ancient kind of practice, which is called Lexio Divina uh -huh. to dig into it and then one of us then preaches the gospel but it is as if the whole community has thought reflected and now we're preaching together we live together so we prepare meals together we eat together and I would say one of the most attractive aspects to our parish is not simply that there are sacraments going on but that the quality of the sacraments, the availability of the sacraments, mm. and if you will, of the joy of the sacraments radiates from that living Dominican community that's there in San Francisco. So what a pleasure to be to be there and to have a parish that's connected there. Yeah, it's beautiful. And there's yeah. beautiful music. I know oh, that yes. for a fact, yeah. the, best, the best in San Francisco. Amen. And, <laughs> and your communications, which is an important part right. of your modern preaching, mm -hmm. uh, is wonderful, it seems to me. So look, we have about a minute and a half left. So. Yeah. Take some time, each of you, and tell what message do you want to leave the Catholic viewers with or the non-Catholic viewers as well? I would just say, really, live your faith boldly but with joy. You know, I mean, we, we need to be bold about our faith, but also people should see that we're different, that, we're, that we are happy because we have the gospel. No, indeed, Jesus says that and gives one of his mission statements, I have come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete, might be full. Our vision at St. Dominic's, particularly, but for our whole province, is to radiate the joy of the gospel and in San Francisco, here in the heart of the city. And when we're joyful, and St. Dominic, one of his nicknames was the Joyful Friar, that joy is contagious, it's infectious, and like a light, like that fire, it spreads without being diminished, so too, we make the boldest witness we can when we're simply joyful and living as Catholics. Yeah, if, if a Catholic wants to f have a great homily during Mass or mm. an intellectual uh, experience at his parish church, yeah. he'll seek out a Dominican church. The preaching will be good. There'll be something good happening in the parish basement with a brilliant <laughs> author, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And there'll be good art, good music, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, there's no question that you people are making a really great impression. Um, and, by the way, St. Dominic is famous for the rosary given to Amen. the Blessed Virgin. Yep, we, so, we wear the rosary. We've got it, we've got it you here. Have we the pray rosary it every, we pray it every the, day. The, the blessings gospel. of the Virgin Mary. The gospel on the string. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We we preach, thank yeah. you very much for being here, Father. Thank you, John. And uh, thank you for telling us all about the Dominicans in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. We'll see you next time.